Bay, Payne County, Oklahoma, Stillwater, America, Father Brian O'Brien coming to you. Uh, we're here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. I'm with yeah, we my, are. Uh, my my friend and brother priest in the Lord. Uh-huh. His name is Father Kerry Wakulich, and uh, we're the Pastors of Pain. We, we do, are. We do a little a little podcast and radio show coming to you from uh, Stillwater Radio on Perkins Road. Uh, so today we we're, we usually don't like sort of make. T- today is Friday, March twentieth, when we're recording. This. It's Orange Day, and so Father Kerry's in his in his America's brightest orange. Uh huh. And Go pokes. we usually don't say the date because it you know the broad, broadcast. But with with how the news is like changing so fast. Somebody said to me yesterday, Father Kerry. They said, um, "Dang, the world is really different than it was a week ago." <laughs> yeah. So even like last, if if you're a regular listener to the show and you listen to last week's episode, which came out on Sunday, which was about the Stations of the Cross, um, we recorded that kind of before. I mean, things were happening in China and Italy and lots of other places, but but COVID nineteen had not come to our shores. It hadn't, uh, or certainly come to Middle Red America. Dirt Riviera either. And so you could listen to that and be like, "What the heck is wrong with these guys? Like, don't they?" Don't they know what's going on in the world? <laughs> we don't. Fact, we just recorded it like before uh, it it all sort of broke. Anyway, so we 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 even had one recorded already for for Sunday, which was about the Triduum, <laughs> and and that, and we and we still might play that at some point. Um, but we thought Father Kerry and I th- were talking. You know, we've been we've spent we've spent a lot of time together uh, this week. Uh, we're supposed to be on spring break. I'm supposed to be with my parents in Houston. You're supposed to be in the Dominican Republic on a mission trip, and we're both here. 25 and, students, and we have no regrets. We love, we love it here. <laughs> I love being God. But we were both. Your trip got canceled, and I, I purposely just d- didn't go to to, to Houston just because I didn't want to get stuck there. And there's a lot to do here of taking care of our people, like and, weddings, and like <laughs> like a, like a Thursday for example, wedding. For example, <laughs> for example, <laughs> how many times have you been to a wedding with five people? And the photographer was one of the witnesses. <laughs> so we, so here's the here's the story. Beautiful couple, Aaron Aaron Ritchie and Chase Mongol. They, I've been preparing them for for the last several months. She um, was a Bishop get, Kelly grad to get married. Aaron's Bishop Kelly grad. And they're both OSU grads. I've known grads. the family forever and ever and ever. Both OSU grads. Chase from yeah. Ponca City. Um, beautiful young couple, and they had planned to get married March twenty eighth. Okay. And I was going to go to Tulsa and and do the wedding, which I don't, which I don't usually do. I mean, two hundred some people coming to the wedding. Four, they invited four hundred people. What? And they were going to have a big party at Kane's Ballroom, and I mean, it was just going to be, you know, it was going to be an awesome blowout. And as things kind of, you know, the world sort of closing in on itself, and people are having to stay home, and so they were going to have um, a kind of a smaller wedding, and it, but 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 just invite like kind of immediate family, right? And then you know there's but there's immediate family that has has ba- has babies, uh, old, the you know parents who are above the sixty plus, uh huh. And so anyway, we're talking to him, and she you know just kind of working through it of what what can we do. And I said, I mean, do you guys just want to come to Stillwater and we can do it? Yes. Like with nobody there, <laughs> and she kind of yes. they kind of thought about it and they talked it through with their families and they prayed about it and just said, yeah, we we just want we want to be married. And Aaron said it was beautiful. She said, "I like I want to be with my husband through this." Oh, golly, that's awesome! And so this was thir- so Thursday, Solemnity of Saint Joseph. Um, we had a wedding, and there were seven people there. Yeah, bride and groom. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I was there. I was the the uh, celebrant. Father Carey was there. I was a witness. As uh, the witness, Can the I photographer witness? was there. One of her sorority sisters. One of her sorority sisters. And then uh, we had an organist and a cantor. So it was a wedding <laughs> with seven people. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And I know it was kind of heartbreaking on one level that family wasn't there. But now they're married. Today they're married. Today's their first full day of married bliss. Yeah. And they're, and they're in this together. And now they're going to face the storms of life, COVID-19, and whatever else may come their way. Mm-hmm. Uh, together as a married couple for the next. So six anyway, years. it was it was kind of a if the, if you're looking for some heartwarming, right, right stories oh, in that, the midst of all this. It nastiness. was really beautiful. It was just so sweet and simple. So and, all you people out there, simplify your weddings. Gosh, it was really it was beautiful. My my best wedding this uh, was last summer. It was really awesome. There was this uh, this couple, you know, couple hundred people came to the wedding, 
and they had Chick Fil A, watermelon, and Natty Light. That's what I'm talking and about. And it was awesome. It was so great. More on the Chick Fil A front, but, uh-huh. you know. But it's Friday, so we can't eat meat today. Oh dang! Sorry, man. That is that, it is Friday. What is your um? Well, how are you? What's your? I'm how wonderful. are you? How are your people? I'm wonderful. So uh, I'm. I'm Where call- are your people? Uh, my <laughs> all my students. You know, OSU is canceled to the end of the semester. Uh, online, and it's, online, and it's gone online. So any campus classes yep. is is done. Yep. So we're pushing out videos every day, two a day videos. I like your videos. Hey, thanks a lot. We just uh, today was Friday. It's Orange Day, so I shot it from the inside of the student center, looking back upon Boone Pickens. I saw was, that. Thank you. And we just it, it was a cl- it was a little hey, what is fasting? What is penance? Why not eat meat on Friday? And yeah, let's it's still Lent. It still is still Lent, Lent. still a Friday. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so we uh, we do that, and then uh, I call up and check in on students, and then we're also planning for live Sunday Mass at 10 a.m. How can streamed. they, uh, I mean, are students like, reaching out to you? Are they okay? Yeah, some students are reaching out. Some students are just like, hey, I'm just like sitting at home, bored. Well, I like what you're doing, I mean, to like give them um, resources, you know? I mean, because I think that's, in this day when we're, you know, and who knows what's to come. I mean, people are going to be kind of in their houses and kind of stuck. Uh, there, there's going to be – people need community anyway, and there's going to be a lot less of it. Correct. Um, so we're doing some of the same things you're doing, but on a different – kind of with a different – But with angle. Chacos on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, how about that in front of your church the other night? <laughs> he Last night, Father Kerry recorded a, a little video in, uh, anyway, in front of St. Francis Xavier and – so we're sending all that stuff out on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and the Catholic Pokes group me, which is, you know, a so couple if somebody's listening, wants to get where, 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 where can they go? Go to CatholicPokes.com. And then it's, there's all the links to okay, all the social media good. stuff. Good. And then you're covering uh, like daily mass and liturgy, of the hours, which we're going to take that liturgy, of the hours and start pushing it out as well. So students who, who can download the app for the liturgy, of the hours good. can then pray along with you all, or even, you know, take that and be like, oh, well, how, how do I how do I do this? Well, you know, we've done numerous shows over the two years or so. We've been uh, having this show about, uh, especially like right before spring break or right before Christmas break. Correct. We've yep. done these shows on like, hey, don't like let your prayer life start to stink just because you're you're at your home, correct? Or just because your schedule's a little off. And and that that's really been my I've been really been convicted of in in the midst of this of what all that's going on. You know, kids are out of school. Mm-hmm. A lot of people aren't working. A lot of people are working from home Correct. who don't normally do that. And so it's weird all the way around. People are, you know. So I, I we thought, from the parish perspective, like, let's give people a schedule that they can count Correct. on. So we're doing morning prayer every morning um, at 8 o'clock. Uh, we're doing Mass um, Monday through Saturday at noon. Okay. And then uh, the rosary every night at 7. Awesome. And then on Sundays, we're going to have mass in English, mass in Spanish. Okay. And then uh, Fridays, Stations of the Cross. We're going to do at 1130 uh, in English and 3 o'clock in Espanol. Wow. Excelente, señor. And you can just go to our website, sfxstillwater.org. And there'll be these links. We're using we've we've been playing around with like there's so many different kinds of technology yeah. that make this happen, uh-huh. and we're trying to like make it easy on your dumb priests <laughs> to like who can you know so like we can because because we've had some help we have the awesome like we have a little mini tech team you know yeah. which is all sort of spontaneously come together, but we're like what if if you, if these guys aren't here, then what what could, what do Father Robert and I do? I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> Set up my phone and push a button. Yeah. And I think we've got it. Really? I think. Okay. We're going to do something really fun on Thursday. Normally we have student lunch. So I'm going to cook a meal and then push it out, teach students how to cook on Thursdays. Oh, it's going to be fun. When is this happening? Uh, this is happening uh, this, th- this next coming Thursday. Uh, don't we eat together on Thursdays? I guess you're eating lunch with me on Thursdays. Oh, now. lunch. Lunch. Yeah, it's going to oh, be lunch. Okay. Yeah. So students can then, I can teach them how to I'll make something. At noon. I'll and then over. they can And then they can maybe make it for their parents. Can I be your sous chef? Oh, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I'll put on a hat. Okay. 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 So I got an idea for today's podcast. You go. Okay. So now we're, we're, we don't have Sunday mass. You know, we're, you can watch it online. We do. But, just not. Well, yeah, you can watch it online. Yeah. Now there's this there's a saying for the Acts of the Apostles. And people are saying, "Hey, like I don't have Sunday mass to go to." 
But the church is also much more than Sunday Mass. Yes, okay, it's a fine line we're walking. Sunday Mass, the source and summit of the Christian life, the Holy Eucharist, Second Vatican Council. Uh, The August Sacrament, the Council of Trent says, that which gives us divine life and feeds us as manna from heaven into the kingdom of God, the Holy Eucharist, boom. Big time. And then there's this line from the Acts of the Apostles. And they devoted themselves to the apostolic teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of the bread, the Eucharist, and to prayer. You're, uh, that's what, Acts chapter 2, yeah? Acts chapter 2, 42. Ooh. And it's something we, we talk about when we go on mission trips and pilgrimages amongst the students. Like, your faith life is not compartmentalized to church on Sunday. It can be lived out. I think that's why people are now hungry for stuff, because in the absence of of Sunday mass, they're like, what else can I do? Yeah. And you ready for this? I'm ready. I I think in the in the boredom that is there, creativity is always born. Creativity comes. We're having to be very creative. And we're being very creative. Also. When we just consume things that don't give us joy or don't have an eternal telos, an end, when there's nothing divine about it, when it's only just human construction, then it's Empty. like sugar and it's just ends. And like it's em- sugar, that's a good one. Yeah, it's like sugar and then it just ends and it's empty. So, And you're probably worse off than you were before. Yeah, so people are looking for stuff. So... I guess I'll go back to sleep then. Why? Uh, so what? I mean, I, I think I, I had a. Uh, this may be like a bit too bigger topic than we can handle. So through our youth minister, she was getting some questions like from parents coming from teenagers. Okay. And the question is like, why doesn't God just stop it? <laughs> like, is God all powerful? Yeah. Yeah. Is God all knowing? Yes. Yeah. Is God omnipresent? Yeah. Uh huh. So, like, why doesn't God just stop it? Is God? The question was: Is God still with us? Okay. What would you say? I'd say hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Mean, I'd agree. I'd agree. But you, 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 let's, you let's flesh up, it out. Okay. Well. Uh, Wow, I didn't expect it to go this direction. Well, this quick. It's, it's kind of—I mean, it's the—it's the age-old question of of kind of just of, of like right. human suffering. Mm-hmm. If God loves us, why did Grandma have cancer? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, what what is the you know what is the deal? And I think it gets to—I mean, ultimately—and there's there are people way more articulate on this than than us, including the Catechism of the Catholic Church and Amen, um, and some beautiful scripture. But it's you know ultimately, I think it's important for us to remember. Think, think Good Friday, think Easter Sunday, right? That the Lord al- allows for human suffering, allows Correct. for bad things to happen. Um, did God cause COVID-19? The answer is no. Did he cause it? No. No, God desires our, our good. Amen. Um, but is there sin in the world? Yes. <laughs> is there disease in the world? Yes. Um, are there tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes? Yes. But out of that, and this is kind of this this sort of the mystery of it all, but out of that, God can bring about and does bring about um, tremendous good, that, that these things are happening in his, in his plan, even if he's not directly willing them. God does not will that your grandma has cancer. He doesn't say, I think today, cancer. Um, or I think I think these people need to learn a lesson. People are too busy. Let's <laughs> shut it down. Quarantine. COVID nineteen. Go. COVID nineteen. He takes it off the shelf. He doesn't put it into action. Yeah. No. It's and it's not like that. Um, there's a there's a there's a there's human there's human free will, um, and bad things happen. And, but in the midst of that, that God is still with us. Amen. God is with us. And so I think that's important to remember. I've been pushing out every, in every email I send to my parish. We do it th- like through, through flock note. If you want those updates, by the way, you can text the word Stillwater to 84576. The word, just the word Stillwater to 84576, and you'll get on our flock note. Um, I've just been telling people, reminding people, Jesus Christ is our life and our hope. Jesus Christ is our life and our hope. Uh-huh. That he's with us. Are things bad? Yeah. Might they get worse? 
yeah. Um, but it's God with us, and it's God ultimately bringing about something good, although mysterious, out of this. Yes. It, it, there's a lot of good happening. I mean, sometimes we just see, we watched the news the other night when we were preparing for dinner, we watched it, and I said to you, I've been listening to this for an hour and a half, and everything I got, I know in 10 minutes. And sometimes there's just a barrage of bad stuff going on. Yeah. And so there has to be a real examine of what is good and what is beautiful that is going on. Like, my garden is growing out in front of the church, and these beautiful flowers growing up. You know what I've seen come alive? is people's faith. Because they go back to this line, They're, they don't go back to it and say, oh, uh, yes, in Acts 2.42, it says. But what are they doing? People are learning their faith. They're realizing, okay, I can do the stations of the cross in my home. I can download like yeah. Pope Benedict, Pope Francis, John Paul II, stations of the cross, Lourdes de Montfort. So I can go through these sort of prayers and, and discover through the apostolic teaching, through the history of the church, you know, reading the mystics and the monks and the saints that have endured things like this, like, you know, the Spanish influenza. That was that was only yeah, 100 been years ago, before. and we've 50 million before. people died of that. Yeah. 500 million people got infected we've with it. We've been here before. And how did, how did these people, like, if you ever go, um, last year, uh, two years ago, I went with the wrestling team to Italy, or three years I ago. I remember that, yeah. And there is... In Naples, a massive cemetery, underground catacombs from the plagues. And it's like, how did these people in these times deal with these great viruses and illnesses that were going on? And what did they do? They, they grew in faith and holiness. There are famous intercessors who prayed for plagues to end and storms to end. They gathered around in, in fellowship and helped each other grow in holiness. And I think we have the ability to do that. Like, Oh, no doubt. You know, like some of my focused missionaries, they were doing a, a, a FaceTime multiple feature, uh, and you can do it with lots of people. And they all prayed the rosary together. So there were, there were students all over the country praying the rosary together via FaceTime. And they sent me a screenshot of it. I was like, this is beautiful. I was like, six faces I know, plus focused missionaries sitting together praying. It was beautiful. And so what are we doing? We're we're learning how to grow in fellowship even when we're apart from each other. Which I think is a is is a kind of an epidemic going on in our country right now and around the world. Another one is loneliness. Human loneliness. Before all this. Before all this. Yeah. And now there's like this like I don't know, resurgence of communal life. People are calling in and checking on each other. They want to build that fellowship. They're making, you know, they'll link like five or six people into a conference call just to catch up with friends, just to chat or, you know, call via FaceTime. And I, and I think we want to encourage that. Oh, um, yeah. If you can do FaceTime, do FaceTime. Um, and think especially of not just your own family, uh, but of course, think of your own family. Charity begins at home. Um, <laughs> but but think of your of your neighbors. Um uh, the guys at the Catholic Man Show, we've mentioned them before. One of them tweeted out the other day, just um, think of three people you haven't talked to in a long time and call them and ask them how they're doing. Right? Wow. Here's this, here are these opportunities. You've got time. A lot of us have more time than we're used to having. What do we do? Netflix? Formed.org? Uh, you're just going to watch TV all day? You're going to watch the 24-hour news cycle? Ooh, Be depressed by the I end wouldn't, of the day. I wouldn't do it. I mean, stay informed, of course. But but use this time to build the domestic church of your family, of your home, and to reach out to others. So I was really moved by, uh, there's a guy named Michael Gormley who is a, he's a catechist and evangelist down in Houston. Oh, right. He's actually from Broken Arrow. He's from, the, he's from the diocese, oh, Gormley. baby. Whoa. Um, but he has, uh, he wrote this, this beautiful article, uh, which I have right in front of me, called COVID-19 is an Opportunity for the Church. Um, his website is layevangelist.com. Acts 242, um, your life. And he, <laughs> so here's what, here's what he said. Um, he said, it is probably wise to avoid mass. He wrote this before everything got shut down. Okay. But it is never wise to avoid Christ. Ooh. Although yeah. the holy sacrifice of the mass is the source and summit of our faith, the sacred liturgy does not exhaust the entire activity of the church. 
That's catechism, the catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1072. Does not exhaust. The sacred liturgy okay. does not exhaust the entire activity of the church. So okay. you could, I think there are people who are kind of disappointed in our bishops uh, yes. who have said, like, we're being wimpy, and why are we, sh- you know, why are we shutting this down? Um, and and I, I get that. I disagree with it, but I get it. Um, you know, we're like, we should be like the early martyrs of the church, right? The difference there being... The martyrs of the church chose for themselves to go to their death via lions. <laughs> um, whereas here, if I if we all go to mass and we all spread COVID nineteen, uh, I'm giving it to you. Not this isn't your choice. Anyway, there's a yeah. there's a there's a big difference. There's but a philosophical the sacred liturgy error does not there. exhaust the entire activity of the church. So some people have I think have kind of thrown up their hands and said, well, if there's no mass, then there's nothing. That's not true. What did, what did you just read in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2? Two? 242. The, they devoted themselves four to Four things. The, Here we go. Ap- apostolic teaching. All right. So so that's not the Mass. Yep. The apostolic teaching of the Church. That, Fellowship. Uh, Fellowship, right, Not is not the Mass. To the breaking of the bread, the breaking the of the bread. There's the Mass. Okay. okay. And to prayer. And to prayer. So pra- is, is the Mass the best and highest form of prayer? Yes, it is period. But is the Mass the only way that we pray? No. And watch okay. what's happening yeah. around the world. The Liturgy of the yeah. Hours, the Rosary, uh-huh. um, intercessory prayer for those around you, uh, the, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, uh, Litanies to the Sacred Heart, uh-huh. uh, asking for the intercession of the saints. Oh, um, yeah. There's a whole bunch of ways t- in which to pray. I would Just s- talking to God in your own kind of in your own okay. way. Yeah, there's so, there's so much out there for us to do as Catholics. I mean, you so I mean, we could just walk down these things of the apostolic teaching. Start reading the catechism. Father O'Brien just mentioned this catechism quote. And when he mentioned it the other day, when he mentioned it, I was like, uh, what? I've never heard that before. 1072. Okay. So crack open your catechism. You can find it online as well and just start reading it. Yep. The, these are the, you know, the apostolic teachings. This goes back to the earliest days of Christianity. As it begins to spread throughout the world, they studied the apostolic teaching. So go read the Council of Trent. <laughs> you know, on, on occasions people will say, you know, in the Second Vatican Council, and I would say, which... Which, which writing in the Second Vatican Council? Well, in the Second Vatican Council, I'm like, well, quote it for me. Is it Dei Verboom? Like, go back and, and let's take That's this like opportunity. saying the Bible says. The Bible says. Like, well, wait, ooh, Come which, on, which where? Book? Which yeah, yeah. book? Let's, which, let's so, be specific. you know, take, uh, we, we did that uh, on the Word of God, myself and Clay, when you were out of town, we did the, oh, oh I know, sorry about that. I, I was not supposed was to repeat the worst those. episode ever. Oh, what? what? People loved it. No, they didn't. Worst episode ever? People was, emailed me and saying, never leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, 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 we sorry, have the, Clay. there's lots of stuff to study. Read the, re, go back and read uh, the Council of Ephesus in 431, where it proclaims, Mary is the Holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Or that great line that says, out of the mouth of uh, Leo, Peter has spoken. Go back and, and, and just creep back into those those readings from the from the apostolic fathers. Read Tertullian, uh, read Maximus the Confessor, read Augustine, uh, read the the female mystics and saints of the early church. Yep. Read, re- read, 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 and study your faith in this apostolic teaching. And I would also say, you know, to to what is ultimately what is prayer? Prayer is is talking and listening to God. Mm-hmm. And so if that's not something you regularly do, just start. Right. Um, the way that we learn how to pray is by praying. You see this a lot like with new, new parents who are like, I don't, know what to, I don't know what to do with this baby. Like you can read all the books right. you want and that's a good thing and watch all the YouTube videos on how to be a parent. But how do you learn how to be a parent? By parenting. Mm-hmm. You just got to do it. Right. And, and I think prayer is much the same way. But prayer is also very important. There's a wonderful book, Prayer for Beginners. I think we've mentioned it. Oh, yeah, Peter Kreeft. Peter Kreeft. And he basically says that prayer is, uh, he said, praying is more important than eating. Say again? Praying is more important than eating because uh, prayer ultimately feeds the soul. Your soul is eternal. Your body is not. And so you, you need to feed the soul 
right? Is feeding the soul is more important than feeding the body. Prayer. Prayer is more important than eating. Okay. So are you praying? Are you praying alone? Are you praying with others? And I think especially, goodness sakes, parents, this is a time to shine. I think so many parents, and I, I don't say this critically, but kind of rely on the parish to to do everything. Um, mm-hmm. it's, that's not wise. It's not wise. One, I mean, your parish may be, even the most rockin' parish on the planet is not a replacement for the faith being passed on from parents to children. Amen, brother. And so this is a time when the parish is we're we're in a in kind of a in a point of disadvantage. We're not able to to do what we normally do. Uh, and so parents, it's it's time. You are the primary educators of your children. Wow. Um, let's go. Yeah. Now is the time. And if I don't know if you and if you don't have the resources, yeah, the, let's the parish can help in that regard. Yeah. But you got to be praying with Look, wherever you are. Uh, I've been watching the movie, the the Russian movie, The Island. It's a Russian Orthodox film. And I've like had this resurgence of prayer in this form. You know, the monks, they, they just have this icon. And they believe, you know, this is the teaching of uh, iconography, that because Christ Jesus has come into the flesh, the second person of the Holy Trinity, images can be made of him yep and so you can look at the icon and you speak to him yep you speak to jesus face to face the blessed virgin mary the saints and so if you watch the movie the island not the scary film is this on netflix this is uh i found it on youtube i think it's on netflix but it doesn't have (laughs) subtitles it's got subtitles in it it's a really awesome (laughs) movie russian about prayer fasting and penance during the season of lent but i just like fell in love with this scene where this boy comes in um, with his mom and he's crippled and the priest puts up the icon of Jesus and begins to first do penitential prayer and then begins to speak to Jesus in the image, in the icon, to look at the face of the living God wow. who has become flesh, wow. the second person, of the most holy Trinity, the son of the father. And now then now more than ever. Yeah. Just beautiful scenes in there. So maybe watch that movie and like, okay, this is how I pray. This is how I pray. This is teach me how to pray. Teach oh, me, teach geez. what? I hate it when you do oh that. my! Lessons on prayer, and you could go back and listen to some of our podcasts no. on uh, on prayer. Yeah, definitely go back and listen. There's only uh, I think we're up to now 45 hours of uh, right. recorded uh, blabbering of, <laughs> of the yeah. two of us. All right, we just got another minute or so. Okay, I would encourage you to create a prayer corner in your house. Yeah, yeah. Print, you got printers. Church. You got print church. You got printers. If you don't have any uh, religious images, start printing out religious images and put them on the walls. Just take like some some tape Crucifix, or a, favorite saints. Yeah, put them on the walls. Yep. Just Light a, a candle, a place to go and for your family to pray during this time. But then when this is all over, don't just box it up and put it away. Yeah. Begin again. Remember we talked about this a couple weeks ago? Teresa of Avila. Be begin again. Begin again. Teresa of Avila, the imitation, of, not the imitation of Christ, the soul of the apostolate. Yep. Begin again. Let's just start today new. All right. Tell me your website again where people can find info. Catholicpokes.com. And you can get that. You can go to Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, everything. Catholicpokes.com. Okay. It's one string. And so here in the Diocese of Tulsa, uh, masses are suspended through Wednesday, public masses are suspended through Wednesday, April the 8th. Um, and then we hope to be back up and running on Holy Thursday. Uh, I'm a little skeptical, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so pay attention out there. Uh, focus in. Uh, don't lose heart. And remember that Jesus Christ is our life and our hope. He was before all this. He is during this, and he will be tomorrow, yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, We're the Pastors of Pain, and uh, we'll be coming to you next week. Keep listening. Pass it on uh, to anybody that you know. Pray for us, and we're praying for you.